Okay, so today we're going to continue yesterday's lesson on the light dependent reactions. We've gone over an overview of photosynthesis, then we started uh, getting into the first part of photosynthesis, which is the light dependent reactions. What you guys are looking at here is the thylakoid membrane in the space inside the thylakoid. If you don't remember what the thylakoid is, if you look in here, this is a chloroplast. This is the organelle in which photosynthesis happens. If you zoom in inside the chloroplast, you have an open area called the stroma. And within the stroma, you see these little discs called thylakoids. Well, if I were to zoom in as much as my computer will allow me to, these, an individual disc has an inner space called the lumen, and then we have the membrane that surrounds it. Well, what we've essentially done is draw this membrane at the molecular level. So you can see all the lipids and the proteins that compose it. So if you're sitting at home and you're watching this video and you don't have this drawn, pause the video and copy this entire image. What we're going to do now is we're going to label it. So this first structure here is called an antenna complex. These little circles are, uh, is chlorophyll, it's pigment. And this dark center in the middle is called the primary electron acceptor. Now while I'm thinking of it, I had a student ask yesterday, what, what would happen if plants absorbed all the colors? Because you know that plants absorb red, orange, a little bit of yellow, blue, indigo, and violet. They do not absorb green. They reflect green, which is why plants appear green to us. So she asked, what would happen if they absorbed all the colors? And to that I said, it would be cooked. Like that would be an energy overload. And the plant, would, the leaf would literally be cooked, be burnt up. So that got me uh, thinking, I want to ask you guys two other questions. What color would plants be if they did absorb all the colors? What color would they be? Yeah, they'd be black. Black is an absence of color. When something is absorbed, you don't see it anymore. When, when Mitchell eats a burger, we don't see the burger anymore. It is gone. So there's an absence of a burger. Well, black is the absence of light. If all the light has been absorbed, there's an absence of light. So plants would be black if they absorbed all the colors in the color spectrum. What color would plants be if they reflected all the colors? They'd be white because all the colors in the color spectrum are in white light and it takes a prism to break them apart and to see them. All right, good. Now, this next little molecule you have right here, you guys will not be able to do this in your notes, but we're just gonna work with it. This is a fairy and it goes, oops, it goes, come on. It's able to move back, get forth, then back, get forth. That's what it does, it's just a little fairy. And then this molecule over here, this pump, is called a hydrogen ion pump. Guess what it does? It pumps hydrogen ions. Some things are pretty easy. Okay, next one in line. This is another antenna complex. These little circles here are chlorophyll pigments. And this thing in the middle is a primary electron acceptor. Then you have another little fairy protein. It goes back and forth, then back and forth. And then we have our NADPA, oops, NADP plus reductase. Now, whenever you hear something end with ASE, what does that mean? It is an enzyme. Uh, 
guys, sometimes in biology, we name things exactly as they are. So if you have an enzyme that is called NADP plus reductase, what is it going to do? It's going to reduce what? Look at the name. It's going to reduce NADP plus. Do you remember what NADP plus is in photosynthesis? What does it serve as? Bingo. It's an electron carrier. Now, in all my years of being a bio student or teaching bio as an instructor, I want to warn you that on a lot of tests, they try to trick you into thinking that NADH is the electron carrier for photosynthesis. It is not. NADH is from cell respiration. You might see that. So just be forewarned, NADH and FADH2 are the electron carriers in cell respiration. NADPH is the electron carrier in photosynthesis. Remember, I want you to think of that P as photosynthesis. And then let's go down here and label this guy. This is an ATP synthase. It synthesizes ATP. If you had to describe what the word synthesis means, I would hope that you would, you would think it means produce or to build or to construct or to create. Like all the elements on the bottom of the periodic table are synthetic. They were made. They're made in labs by people. They're, we call them the synthetic. So synthesis means to make. And then we have almost everything labeled. Let me tell you guys a little story. This section of the light dependent reaction is called photosystem two. We can call it PS2. But if I come across you and I ask you, hey, hey, Ayla, what does PS2 mean? She goes, PlayStation 2, photosynthesis 2, I don't know. You're not going to be allowed to use the abbreviation. That's the rule for my class. If you don't know what the word means, you're not allowed to write the abbreviation. This is photosystem 1. Now you might be thinking, Mr. Thorson, I think you made a mistake. Photosystem 1 should be first. There's no mistake. The way this happens, is, the way, what happened was, Photosystem one was discovered first. Scientists were examining plant cells and they, oh, look at this. We got a little uh, electron transport chain here that requires light. So let's call it photosystem one. And then a little while later, scientists discovered a second photosystem. Oh, what are we gonna name it? Uh, let's name it photosystem two. Sure, sounds original. Oh, wait, we got a problem. Photosystem two happens first. Should we change the names? And they go, nah. Nah, let's uh, torture the kids in high school and college a little bit. So here we are. Photosystem two happens first, and photosystem one happens second. Okie dokie. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over what happens in the light-dependent reactions. It is a, a six-step process. It's a lot easier, I think, than what it sounds like. I'd like to reiterate to you that this does take some studying. Uh, very few of you are going to get this right off the bat. So you got to look it over and study your material. This will be on YouTube. Let's begin. Step one. Energy from sunlight is absorbed. in photosystem two by pigments, the pigments being chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. The high energy electrons are passed into the primary electron acceptor. All right, so we're going to draw two electrons, but before I even draw the two electrons, there's one more component of all of this that we have yet to draw. 
and it is the sun. So we're just going to draw a big old sun right here. The sun has been shining down on Earth since Earth was created 4.4 billion years ago. Fun fact, when the asteroid that wiped out most of the dinosaurs hit 65 million years ago, what happened that killed off most life on Earth, not all of it, if it killed everything, we wouldn't be here, is that the asteroid caused a big cloud of dust from the Earth's surface to get into the atmosphere, and it lasted for two years. Without, or with that layer of dust in the atmosphere that blocked out the sun, and a lot of plant life died. Needless to say, plants need sunlight. So this sunlight is going to excite two electrons. These electrons are going to be down here. And the sunlight is going to excite them. Na, 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 na. That was my sound effect for electrons getting excited. So this is all done because of sunlight. If you're wondering where did these electrons come from, they came from water, which we're going to do in step two. You can interchange steps one and two and you would still be right either way. And that's basically step one, everybody. The sun energized, or I should use the word excited, not energized. We can say both, but I think excited is more appropriate. The, the sun energy, which is the, uh, in the form of photons, excites the two electrons. Any questions on step one? All right, let's go down to step two. Oop, wrong color. Step two. Energy in photosystem two is used to split H2O into hydrogen ions, oxygen, and electrons. This process is called photolysis. This is the third time this year you guys have heard that suffix lysis. You've heard of hydrolysis. You use water to split something. You've heard of glycolysis, which is splitting of sugar. Now you have photolysis, which is the using of sunlight to split water into the following. You have two molecules of water being split into four hydrogen ions one oxygen molecule and four electrons. Now, if you struggle at all in chemistry or haven't even taken chemistry, I'm gonna draw this out for you to hopefully have it make a little bit more sense. So, first thing I'm gonna have is a big blue circle here. This big blue circle is gonna represent an oxygen atom. I'm gonna have a smaller red circle here. This is going to represent a hydrogen atom. And I'm going to have a little black dot here. It's going to represent an electron. Because I know there are students in here and there are students watching that have not taken chem yet, so this may not make all the sense of the world yet. There's some of you that haven't taken chem in two years. So this, you may have forgotten. The reason I drew oxygen a little bit bigger is because oxygen has a bigger atom. It's eight protons, eight electrons. A hydrogen is one proton, one electron. So oxygen is just bigger. So when we have a water molecule, and in fact, we have two water molecules here, that means there's going to be one oxygen atom per, and there's going to be two hydrogen atoms, one, two there, and two there. 
I just drew two water molecules. Each water molecule has one atom of oxygen, two atoms of hydrogen. That's why it's called H2O. It is going to get catalyzed into four molecules, excuse me, four ions of hydrogen. one molecule of oxygen and four electrons. That's the definition of a chemical reaction. You just take what you're given and you rearrange it to something new. This is where the oxygen that we breathe come from. When you take in a deep breath, <gasps> that came from water. Plants are able to break the water down into its constituents. And one of those constituents is oxygen. And it takes the two oxygen atoms and puts them together to make O2 gas. So every time you take a deep breath, you have the plants to thank for that, the photosynthesizers. All right, so let's draw this on your diagram. So you have two molecules of H2O, it's in the lumen, plants have to have water. It is going to interact with photosystem two, mainly the antenna complex, and it is going to form one, two, three, four ions of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. The plant is going to keep the hydrogen in the lumen. The amount of hydrogen continues to build up. What do plants tend to do with O2? It's a waste product. What do they do with it? They release it. Okay, good. By what, what are those little structures on the bottom of a leaf that allow CO2 in and O2 out? Stoma or stomata. Don't get it confused with stroma. The stroma is the stuff inside of a chloroplast. So O2 is released into the atmosphere via stomata. So you have the um, oxygen, or you have plants to really thank for giving us breathable air. Okay, that is step two. Any questions after step one and two? We're a third of the way through. All right, let's go to step three. Step three, high energy electrons are used to pump hydrogen ions into the Thylakoid space. Now as a result, the electrons are low energy now and passed on to photosystem one.
Okay. So let's follow these electrons. When we're all done with this pathway, I'm going to highlight it so you guys can see the whole pathway that these electrons take. So I want you to remember that this little blue molecule here acts like a ferry or a shuttle. It's going to transport one electron at a time from the antenna complex to the hydrogen pump. Well, antenna complex to the hydrogen pump. So these electrons are going to basically just move here. Now the good news is, is that they're going to uh, pump a whole bunch of hydrogen into the thylakoid thanks to this pump. It basically activates the pump. Here's the problem though, guys. It's not really a problem, but it's a consequence. These electrons become de-energized again. We call that going back down to their ground state. So they gave off a lot of their energy and their energy was lost to power the pump. So we got, high, we got a lot of hydrogen ions going in there, but it does come at a cost. Yeah. No, no, just one way trip. The electrons are being ferried over one at a time from the antenna to the hydrogen pump. Where they go from where they are right now? Yeah, we're not there yet. We're, we're working our way there. Okay, that is step three. Oh, here's the end of step three, actually. That little sub point I wrote. After they're down here, they're going to move on over to photosystem two, or uh, photosystem one, excuse me. Okay, step four is pretty easy. Step four. Photosystem one re-energizes the electrons using energy from the sunlight. I think a better word than re-energize is re-excites. Photosystem one re-excites the electrons using energy from Sunlight. So we need to just draw the sun again. Remember, there's not two suns. I want you to think, Mr. Thorson, there's another sun. It's the same sun. And it's uh, releasing its photons to power up those uh, electrons again. So here we go. No, 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 no. So it's just like what happened in step one. The electrons have been excited again in photosystem one, just as they were in photosystem two. We are two thirds of the way through. Are there any questions? All right. Let's go to step five. Step five, high energy electrons are passed to NADP plus reductase. This is going to form NADPH. Remember that NADP plus receives two electrons and one hydrogen ion to become NADPH. This is your electron carrier. 
for photosynthesis. If I were to try to explain photosynthesis as simply as I could possibly do it, I would say in part one of photosynthesis, you make the energy to create sugar. In part two of photosynthesis, you use the energy to create sugar. This is one of the pieces of energy that you need to create sugar. This is an electron carrier. It carries two electrons at a time, just like the electron carriers from cell respiration. So let's draw that. Guys, this ferry right here is going to bring one electron from the antenna over to the reductase, one at a time. That's what it's doing. Okay, these electrons are going to combine with NADP plus to form NADPH. If you're wondering where did the hydrogen come from, there's hydrogen everywhere. It's the most abundant element in the universe. You'll never have a shortage of it. There's hydrogen all over. It's basically a proton. And this, high, or this NADPH is then going to be shipped out to the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle is part two of photosynthesis. We will do that next class. This is your electron carrier. Now I have a question for you. If NADPH is going to the Calvin cycle, what is going to be coming back from the Calvin cycle? Why, you're right, but why? Why is it in, in biology in this class, you can't just say what it is, you have to say why. Why would NADP plus come back? To be reduced. You could say it's gotta be reloaded, it's gotta be recycled. Why do you, why does, why do one of your parents always go to the grocery store? Like maybe once a week, why? You're out of food, you gotta reload. Why do you go to the gas station every week or so? Huh? You got to reload. You got to restock your supply. And so NADP plus is going to come back from the Calvin cycle and get reloaded again. And it's going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Okay, any questions on that? No, let's go to the sixth and final step. Hydrogen ions flow from the lumen into the stroma through ATP synthase to create ATP. When you give ADP enough energy to bind with a third phosphate, it forms ATP and the, the energy is in the bonds. So uh, guys, this should look awfully similar to what we did a couple days ago. I think it was Tuesday when we did the electron transport chain. You have all these hydrogen ions that are really building up inside the lumen. Now you can either think back to chemistry or think back to the first unit of this class. What do you call it where you create a huge concentration of a substance on one side of a membrane and hardly any substance on the other side of the membrane? I heard a few people whisper it, a concentration gradient. So according to the most basic laws of diffusion, which way do these hydrogen ions want to diffuse towards? They want to go out from high to low. And so these hydrogen ions will pass through this uh, ATP synthase complex. This powers the complex, and this is going to produce ATP. So it's going to generate enough energy to get an adenosine diphosphate to bond to a third phosphate to create adenosine triphosphate, ATP. 
every hydrogen ion that passes through this pump is going to make an ATP. So you're going to make quite a bit. This ATP gets shipped off to the Calvin cycle. So I have a question for you. If ATP is going to the Calvin cycle, what's coming back from the Calvin cycle? ADP. Why? It needs to get re-energized. Exactly. That is the entire light reaction. So what I would like to do next, we have about five minutes. I want to highlight the entire pathway of these electrons. Okay, question. Does this look like a Ferris wheel? As, and what I mean by that is, does it look like a cycle where you're doing the same thing over and over? Or does it look like a line to get on the Harry Potter ride? This is not a cycle. This is a one-way ticket. Those electrons are not coming back. So what we call this is a non-cyclic pathway. A non-cyclic pathway sends the electrons out and those electrons do not come back. This is not a Ferris wheel. This is not a cycle. This is not going to go round and round and round. So that would uh, bear the question, what is the cyclic pathway? So we have about three minutes. I'm going to try to squeeze this in. Okay, this is a thylakoid. You got your antenna, got your hydrogen uh, pump. This is photosystem two. You've got your antenna, you've got your reductase. This is photosystem one. And then you've got your ATP synthase complex. So here's my big question, guys. Let's say that you have two electrons end up right here. They're at the uh, NADP plus reductase. They're ready to jump on board an NADP plus, but we have a problem. What happens when there is no NADP plus? What, what happens to these electrons? It's like you're waiting for your, your train to arrive, but there's no train. And there's not going to be a train. You're just going to stand at the train station for the rest of your life. You can't do that. So here's what happens. These electrons are going to go back to this hydrogen ion pump. And what they're going to do is they're going to power the pump. They're going to go up. You know, they're going to go de-energized, re-energized, de-energized, re-energized, de-energized, re-energized in a cycle energizing this pump over and over and over. And what they're going to cause to happen is all these hydrogen ions that are in the stroma are going to get funneled into the lumen. And that's going to bring hydrogen ions inside. This does not consume water. It does not affect the first antenna. So these electrons are going round and round and round and round and round and round and round, and round that pump. And eventually, these hydrogen ions are going to go through the ATP synthase and form ATP. This is called a cyclic pathway. I know I'm rushing through this, but you can go back and watch this video and slow it down for yourself. In a cyclic pathway, there's only ATP that is made. There's no NADPH. And there's only photosystem two. There's no photosystem one. And that is all.